All right, so I'm gonna be taking apart a MSI GS75 Stealth SE or 8SE laptop. This one came with 16 gigs of RAM, has 500 gigabytes as a factory, and this is a 2060 Ti, or 2060 RTX, I'm sorry, with an i7 8700K, I think. We have about 16, I think, screws, or 15 screws. We'll count that where we go a long way. And these are just using standard uh, Phillips head screws. You make sure you want to back up everything before you open this up. Of course, there are certain things that we have to follow up. There's just different screws for different heads, so make sure you have that. Um, best way to do this is record what you're doing with a camera, and then kind of place the screws in correspondingly that you know you won't be touching. So these are top screws. I think some of the screws are longer than others, so you have to make sure that some of these things are in the right position. But I think overall that some of these screws are the same. I wouldn't count that on that, so I'll just make sure you line up in the same orientation that you had them originally. One metal. The problem is this downside of this motherboard is that, or this laptop motherboard is that, it's installation for the CPU as well as the hard, not hard drive, I'm sorry, the RAM itself is on the back end of the motherboard. So you have to flip this motherboard on the other side, which is where the keyboard is inside the laptop. And I think this is one of the downsides when you definitely have a laptop like this. Um, you do have a factory steel seal sticker, so you want to make sure that if you're going to avoid this, you're not doing so under warranty. I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. Bottom part. Three screws on the bottom. Two, four screws on the top, which is arbitrarily in three, well, three screws on top that is in weird positions, but I'm guessing those are the heat, hold the heat sinks in. So these are I'm doing that. So it's kind of weird. If you have any fingernails, this might work much better, but it's kind of hard to pop it out. Um, I've already popped this open already um, and kind of seen some tutorials, but other than that, um, it should be fairly easy when you go around. You don't want to apply too much pressure uh, to the sides because you definitely don't want to break those clips that hold the laptop down. Uh, and there we go. Uh, now the hard part is to get everything out and try to make sure everything's good, but you want to also disconnect the battery. So, so I'm going to flip this plastic tab right here. We're going to pull back this part of this power. And then, there we go. There's a second cable. I think this is the battery. Yeah, this is definitely the battery here. I'm guessing this is the power to something. This looks like the GPU power, I'm guessing. We're gonna take the NVMe out, I think, just in case as well. A break along the way. So we're gonna pry that one out. We're gonna put it on the side right here. Um, so this is the first time looking at this kind of motherboard, so I uh, just wanna make sure this is uh, we're doing the fight right procedures. So, can I wiggle that out? All right. Oh, it has a thermal pad on the bottom. Interesting. That is really sticky. That's weird. Tweezers would be really great right now, actually, if you think about it. Um, hmm. Might have to flip it over and try to get it, but kind of worries me a little bit. Take this out, this pin that seems like an LED light indicator. And three screws that's holding the battery in. Nope, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, a screwdriver. Oh, this was a magnetized screwdriver. Four. These are tiny little speakers on these things. Yeah. And make sure you don't bend the batteries too as well. I almost did that too. And oh, you can definitely pull the bat uh, battery out like that. Ah, oh, thank God. Okay, make sure the pins are good. Here we're good. All right, I'll put that on the side right here. I guess we're gonna take this one off. Pull this one out as well. It's tucked under the battery, so you wanna make sure that goes in first. Got a couple of ribbons. I think we're good in terms of the other parts. This right here seems like the speaker wire and disconnect this. This looks like the speaker wire. This is definitely speaker wire. These are the light indicator LEDs. This is an NVMe slot right here. 
we got a couple of screws you have to find underneath this shroud that we have, protector shroud. We got another connector right here, so I'm going to be careful when we flip that over. Let me pull this one out. Right. Um, so let's diagnose what we need to do next. So we got these. So one, two, three, four, five, six at the bottom. Got one on the top. Now next we have to peel up the shroud itself and discover any other screws that we need to take out. So, oh, but no, it just comes right off. Okay, it looks like an antenna for some reason, but I don't remember antennas looking like that. Usually they're prongs. So is there any screws down here? I don't like this at all. All right, let's let's not mess with that for now. Let's check up here. Nope, no screws here. That's good. All right. Let's peel back these. This seems like the display for the monitor. So let's take that off. I think we're gonna have to take this off too as well. This is me second guessing. This is where the Wi-Fi card is. All right, so um, I'm gonna take these screws out and then see what happens. I'm gonna put them in here. There's I only see two screws, so hopefully those are the screws that you just need to take out. If it's just two screws, wow, that's really easy placement for taking this apart. So let's kind of see what kind of gives and what doesn't give. Pins out. I want to make sure your pins are right. So there is a red one that's running to the top part. This is the aux and this is the main. You want to make sure you line them up correctly. Um, plastic pry tool over too as well. You want to pull it straight out too as well. And I'm not doing that. There you go. Oh boy. Yeah, that definitely broke the pin off. Oh, I'm an idiot. Well, I just definitely broke the pin off of this thing. Do this fix right here. Well, that is one way to break your Wi-Fi card. We have one more screw right here. I just realized that. That is where the heat sink is. Put this on the side right here. All right, and yeah, it just came loose just like that after breaking our Wi-Fi card. So, oh, it just came with one slot of, and I'm gonna keep this on the side, just install these in here. Make sure you line up to the right pins itself. Slide it down, push it down until you hear a snap on each end. These are these metal clips. I'm gonna put this on this one, make sure it's oriented the right way. Push it in, make sure the pins are lining up inside correctly. And you push it down on each side, make sure those click in, and we're done. We just upgraded RAM. Board right here, line up the pins. Make sure you line up with the auxiliary cord or auxiliary aux part cable here, here. Pull that through, there's a cable back here. You wanna make sure you got this one. This part right here goes on top. Okay, so I'm back. We have the killer 
Wi-Fi chip card back inside. We have the pins that are actually still good on two pins that's pulling out. So we have the main and aux pins. The pins on the mains are broken in terms of the coupling on the outside that fits over with the antenna. But other than that, it's still having contact in the thing in here. So what I've did was that I'm just gonna hot glue it uh, on top of it, putting pressure with the tape, the yellow tape on top, and seeing that if it's gonna move or not. And then we're just gonna see if that's gonna work um, uh, with the card in there. And then we're gonna connect this. There's a flap right here. We're gonna have to lift that up. You can use your fingernails or some plastic pry tools that you have. You don't have to do a lot of pressure. Um, and you just flip it back, slide the ribbon in, flip back in, make sure that's snug. Just kind of wiggle a little bit and see if that's gonna stay. And then we're gonna just put this back of this adhesive sticker, um, that's cloth or something like that. And then we have everything in place. We got three of our NVMEs and we're gonna place it back inside to the spots and the corresponding slots of these holes. Make sure the pins, there's like a little prong right in the bottom. So you're gonna stick that back inside. As so we're gonna have it in here just for temporarily, I think for now, and I'm gonna boot it up and see if it has any issues. If not, I'll just put it back all together <laughs> eventually. Um, and we'll see if it's gonna stay or stick together. So the Wi-Fi card seems to be staying in place so far right now. So. I'm gonna push this back in with the power source. Batteries in, we are engaged. We have all our connectors connected. We have our top part, second part, third part, and the top parts. They seem a little bit good. I'm gonna slide this battery back in. Make sure you don't bend the battery as well of the cells. All right. It's two. There's a third screw. I'm gonna pop this all on here for now, and then we're gonna test it out. Flip it over. We're gonna turn it on and see if it's on. We probably do need to charge it though, so that's one thing. Power's on, laptop turning on. We have a display. It goes through. New NVMe, sweet. We're gonna go to Wi-Fi. We have Wi-Fi. Oh, beautiful, we fixed it. <laughs> All right. Well, that concludes to our video. We're gonna shut this thing back off. We're gonna screw it back in. Shut down, shut down anyways. And while that is shutting down, we are going to let it boot off. And then we're going to unplug it once that light indicator goes off. Other than that, if you guys have any questions, I'll see you guys in whatever video I make next. Alright, see ya.